Welcome to the first Sports Jam of the 2012-2013 school year. I'm Jay Wilcox. And I'm John Jacobson. Good to be back with you again as we bring you many of the top prep highlights from the past week, plus interviews and stories on teams, players, and coaches from here in the northwest suburbs. And Jay, we're going to kick this show off with football. That's right, Osseo Maple Grove style. While Maple Grove leads the all-time series over Osseo, it's the Orioles that have had the better of it in recent seasons. The teams played two close games last year, and their meeting in Week 2 was filled with twists and turns. Here in Lampker's Orioles get off to a slow start in this one. Watch Maple Grove's Bryson Whiteha jump the route here and pick off the garrison Gillard pass. Whiteha has nothing but turf in front of him as he scores on a 55-yard return for a 7-0 crimson lead. About four minutes later, Blake Skaya throws deep for Whiteha. It's close, but he keeps possession before D-back Bridge Tussler yanks it away. It's ruled a touchdown. It's worth another look, and it's 13-0 Maple Grove after one. But Osseo storms back. Gallard is hit, but he gets enough on it to get it to a wide-open Harrison Lucas here. A 46-yard pass play that sets up a touchdown, and Osseo's within 13-7. And they get a defensive score of their own as Tony Gamash picks off the sky a pass and brings it back 30 yards for a score. Osseo also misses their extra point and we're even at 13-13. It's Maple Grove making the last big play of the first half. Jack Wallach takes the pitch and takes off on a sweep. Osseo has no one in position to make the play and Wallach scores from 39 yards out. It's 20-13 Crimson at halftime. But Osseo's fans get to cheer in the end. After they tie it up in the third, Osseo takes the lead for the first time as Troy Cray gets to the outside and races in for a 36-yard touchdown. He has a huge night on D and scores twice, and it's 26-20 Osseo. After driving deep, Maple Grove's pushed back by a key penalty on third and 28, a little razzle-dazzle, but Skaya is intercepted by Tussler. His second pick of the night helps seal a 26 a 20 win and John one of those games that pretty much lived up to what you hoped for mm -hmm. coming in great crowd on hand and uh, those teams want to beat each other real bad and Osseo gets this one early on it looks like Maple Grove's going to win it and then Osseo looked like maybe they would seal it late uh, but then a uh, big punt return by Woida and thought maybe, maybe Maple Grove would come back and then Bridge Tussler gets that big interception so yeah it was a very entertaining game so a lot of penalties and some turnovers but Overall, fun game to be at. Yeah, some things to pick out if you're yeah. the coaches in the film room. It wasn't always artistic, but definitely a great game, and we are going to be hearing from Osseo coming up later in the show, too. All right. Well, Champlain Park is considered a strong contender in the North Division of the Northwest Suburban Conference. The Rebels have faced two late conference teams, though, to start the season. Champlain Park hosting a Hopkins team looking to go 3-0. and Late first quarter, Hopkins' J.T. Den Hartog with the play action to Tyler Johnson for the touchdown that makes it 7-6 to Royals. Second quarter, Champlain Park quarterback Trevor Garrison zips in from 11 yards out. The Rebels take a 20-7 lead. But Hopkins comes back in the second half and takes the lead on a wild play. Then Hartong loses the ball, but it goes right into the hands of Terrence Bowers. He runs in for the touchdown, and it's 23-20 Royals. Then in the fourth quarter, Den Hartog rolls out, and it's Charlie Giuliani for the score. It's 30-20 Hopkins. Champlain Park does make it interesting with a late touchdown, but Hopkins wins at 37-32, and the Royals are now 3-0. We played a great team first week, but this team, I mean, they're really good, really big, and we have a lot of respect for them, so it was really cool to come out and play hard. You know, the second half, we came out strong. Our boys did it. It was just a great time. Hopkins Lake Conference rival Wyzetta was after a second straight win over a South Suburban Conference team. Trojans hosting Eastview and tough defense in this one. Wyzetta swarming quarterback Mark Dwyer. Will Long forces a fumble. The Lightning get back on the ball. Wyzetta leads a low scoring game 3 0 at halftime. Third quarter and the Trojans defense comes through again. Nelson Moan picks off the Henry McIsaac pass. He weaves his way 42 yards downfield, bringing it inside the Eastview 10 yard line. Next play, and the give is to Mitch Underhill. He fights his way into the end zone for a four-yard touchdown as the Trojans take a 10-0 lead. Later in the quarter, the going a little easier for Underhill. Again, in close. The short TD run puts Weiss it up 17-0. Underhill adds a third touchdown in the fourth quarter, 
as Wazetta wins its second straight game to start the season. 24-7 Trojans, the final. You know, I think it was a, a typical early season game. We made some nice plays, but we weren't consistent. Uh, you know, a few mental mistakes here or there, but you know, we played a good club, and, and in the end, I think uh, we were able to uh, remain composed and, and make plays when we needed to. And congratulations to Coach Ricky Foggy and the Park Center Pirates. The Pirates scored their first win in nearly two years, defeating St. Francis 19-6. Jake Tanner threw two touchdown passes, while Antoine Scott rushed for 148 yards and a score. The first win for second-year head coach Foggy. The Pirates take on Champlin Park this week. And Tutino Gray slips past Edina 15-12 in a non-conference game. The 2-0 Eagles in the Northwest Suburban Conference for football this season travel to Anoka Friday night. Wyzetta, Minnetonka, and Eden Prairie all finished in the top seven at the state class AA girls swimming and diving meet last fall. Those schools were part of a strong field at the Minnetonka Invitational on Saturday. In the 50-yard freestyle, Emma Paulson takes second place for Wyzetta. Teammate Anna Petty comes in third. In the 100 butterfly, Eden Prairie freshman Bree Thorne takes first. Mackenzie Merriam takes bronze for Wyzetta. Stephanie Dice finishes fourth. In the 500 freestyle, Courtney Evenson is second for Armstrong. Kira Zubar of Eden Prairie is first. Emma Rule of Armstrong is third. And here are the final scores at the meet. Minnetonka wins it with 700 team points. Wyzetta comes in second place with Eden Prairie third. Maple Grove is a distant fourth. Armstrong is fifth with Hopkins placing sixth out of eight teams. And also Jay New pool record set in that meet by Maple Grove diver Lexi Tenenbaum and Wyzetta's Madison Price in the 100-yard breaststroke. A little bit of a state meet preview, I think, yes, here early in the season. Mm -hmm. Time for our first break. When we come back, highlights from soccer, cross-country, and more. Welcome back to Sports Jam. And time to talk soccer. Defending Class AA girls champ Wyzetta took on last year's Class A champ Lake. And this one on the natural grass field over at Blake. Erica Grindy delivers a pass and watch Kylie Schwartz whirl and fire the well-placed left-footed shot here inside the post. And it's a 1-0 Trojans lead. Off a free kick, Schwartz will drill it right under the crossbar. It's a 2-0 Wyzetta lead at halftime as the umbrellas will come out in the stands in this one. Second half and Margaret Roca sets up Ruby Stauber for the shot and goal. The Trojans are rolling with a 3-0 lead and they dominate. Summer Johnson with a good shot on net, a nice stop here, but the ball finds its way back to Isabel Anderson for the goal, and it's 4-0 Trojans. Schwartz later completes the hat trick for Wyzetta as they beat Blake 5-0 to improve to 4-1-1 this season. And I think that it was a really good competition, and both teams battled really hard, but I think that uh, you know we wanted it more, and I think we finished the opportunities, and I think we played really well. Park Center's boys soccer team has a big week with home games Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. The Pirates are looking to continue a hot start as they faced Armstrong. Allen and Jipwo with a hard shot for Armstrong. Brian Bakke with a nice stop there. At the other end, it's ahead to Andy Martinez and his shot knocked away by Falcons goalkeeper Michael Elder. Park Center strikes 16 seconds into the second half. Great moves by Francis Caroma. He turns and scores. Yes. Park Center stays unbeaten with a 2-1 to one win. In cross country, Hopkins hosted the annual Bauman Round Invitational, named after longtime coaches Ed Bauman and Jim Round. The warm day to run out at Gale Woods Farm. This is Hopkins' Joe Klecker who wins the boys' race with a time of 15 minutes, 56.3 seconds. The Royals' Thomas Hegard and Reed Fisher take 7th and 8th place, respectively, on a great day for the Royals. Nathan Comer in the red and blue is in 27th place for Armstrong. In the girls' race, Carly Brandt of Moundsfield beats Grace Lusley of Chan Hansen. Sarah Klecker of Hopkins is 13th. Madeline Hink of Hopkins is 24th, with Park Center's Kate Simonette finishing 25th overall. Here's a look at the final team scores. Hopkins wins the boys' meet. Another late conference team, Eden Prairie, finishes second with St. Cloud Cathedral third. Among the other local schools, Armstrong finishes 10th, Champlain Park 15th, and Park Center 17th. Chanhassen wins the girls meet with Lakeville South, a distant second. 
Hopkins edges Eden Prairie for third. Armstrong finishes 12th, one spot ahead of Park Center with Champlain Park in 15th. At the Benilde St. Margaret's Invitational in Crystal on Saturday, Minnehaha Academy's boys win the meet with a cumulative team time of 1 hour 14 minutes 45 seconds. Orono is second with St. Thomas Academy third and the host Red Knights in fourth. Ethan Wagner of Minnehaha finishes first with a time of 10 minutes 2 seconds for 2 miles. Holy Family is the girls winner. Minnehaha is second with Trinity third. Benilde is sixth overall. Maria Eastman of Holy Family wins the mile and a half race with a time of 8 minutes and 43 seconds. Now to volleyball, where the Hopkins Royals are off to a strong start. Hopkins on the road, a non-conference match against Orono. Highlights from the first game, Nora Reed, the big kill for Hopkins. Paige Brohammer, though, comes up with a kill off the block for the Spartans. Madeline Eastman with a kill for Orono, and the Spartan, Spartans win game one, 25-21. Game two, Sierra Salisbury, the kill down the line for Hopkins. And the fake on the set here, and point dropped in for the Royals. Emmy Coppy kills one down the line, and the Royals win in game two, and it's even up at 1-1. Jane McCown puts it down for Orno early in game three to give them the lead. Reed answers, pounding the overpass, and Hopkins takes that game 25-19. And Hopkins dominates game five. Salisbury putting down the free ball at the net. And then on match point, Audrey Erickson ends it with a kill. Hopkins wins three games to one. After losing a regular match to uh, top-ranked Lakeville North on Thursday, Wyzetta lost to the Panthers again Saturday in the championship of the Southwest Minnesota Challenge in Marshall. Very good tournament down there. Hopkins places third. In the North Suburban Conference match, Cooper hosting Irondale. Irondale serving with a 21-18 lead in game one, but Cooper gets the middle attack to Anna Hendricks for the kill, and the Hawks are rallying back. It's a strong group of juniors this year for Cooper. This time, Josephine Lindgren gets the kill as Cooper takes the lead at 23-22. They go on to take the first game with a nice rally, 25-22. And game two is all Cooper. Katie Bowler sets it to Ricky Williams for the kill. The Hawks roll to a 20-5 lead on the way to a 25-13 in that second game to go up two games to none. They trail for much of game three before another rally. Bowler sets to Lindgren for the kill, and Cooper ties the game up at 20-20. And on match point, the Hawks get the block and then push it back over. Irondale can't recover as Cooper sweeps the Knights to move to 3-0 on the season. Northwest Suburban Conference Volleyball teams opened conference play last week. Armstrong playing host to Osseo in one of those matches. Osseo is in white after an Armstrong dig to get it to their off, get into their offense, but Cheyenne Sanders gets a big block at the net. 25-17 win for Osseo in game one. In game two, Armstrong keeps it close for a while. It's back and forth in the net until Indigo Thompson delivers the kill. The Falcons are within 15-12. Off the Armstrong serve, Osseo sets to Belinda Barf next, and she goes off speed, tipping it to an open spot on the court, and Osseo wins game two, 25-16. Armstrong starts well in the third game. Thompson sets it left side. Paige Whipple for the kill, and the Falcons grab a 9-6 lead. As they try to get back in the match on their home court. But Osseo retakes control. Setter Megan Pekarik disguises this one very well, dumping it over for a point. Similar scores in all three games. Osseo sweeps Armstrong in the league opener for both teams. Also in the Northwest Suburban Conference, Park Center hosted Champlain Park. Stephanie Lovehog gets the block for the Pirates as they lead 10-5 in the first game. Later, the Pirates go outside and Jessica Vlander for the kill shot. Park Center wins game one, 25-19. Champlain Park comes back in the second game. Allie Welly. Sets it to Maria Sampson for the kill, and Champlain Park wins, tying the match at 1-1. Brenna Walton setting to Taylor Gore for the kill here. Champlain Park goes on to win the final three sets, and they beat Park Center in four. Maple Grove's girls' tennis team lost to a couple of the Northwest Suburban Conference's top teams last week. 
They look to bounce back in a non-conference match against Hill Murray. Number one singles, Jillian Claussen serving for Maple Grove. Haley Beath in the near court for Hill Murray, and Beath gets the re winner. The match goes to a third set, and Claussen takes over late. She ends this rally with a cross-court backhand winner for the Crimson. Then Beath comes to the net, but Claussen rips the backhand passing shot. A tough match that Beath wins in three sets. And number one doubles, Jessica Berry and Elise Hoffman in the far court for Maple Grove. Hoffman with the backhand winner on a way to a three set win. A two singles, Ann Arisman's return of serve doesn't come back. She wins for the Crimson in three sets. And Maple Grove wins this one five to two. And John, we'll see how the three District 279 teams match up in girls tennis this week. That's right, Maple Grove plays at Osseo Tuesday and then at Park Center on Thursday. Straight ahead on this season opener of Sports Jam, we meet a sister duo that's leading a resurgence in the Armstrong Swimming Program. That's in our Sports Jam Spotlight. The Armstrong Girls Swimming Team is a young and hopefully up-and-coming program looking to build on last year's success. The Falcons are led by Brooke and Courtney Evenson. Jason Melillo profiles the sisters in our first Sports Jam Spotlight. Armstrong senior Brooke Evenson tells a great story about the first time her younger sister Courtney got in the pool. We actually started swimming together. We were in swim lessons together when we were really little but they actually had to move Courtney out because she wouldn't let go of me, so we couldn't do anything. So it kind of started with that, and then we've just been swimming together our entire lives. I don't remember it, but our mom always told us this story, and uh, it's just kind of now it's like, I don't want to hang on to her. Like, I'm off of my own, but she's still there. So it's kind of funny. Courtney Evenson didn't sink, and she can definitely swim. Just a sophomore, Courtney holds the school record in three individual events. Brooke Evenson is the school record holder in the 100 backstroke and is also part of two relay teams, along with Courtney, that currently have the fastest times in school history. They're obviously the best swimmers on our team, but I think for the younger girls and even me being on varsity, I look up to them because I know they work so hard and it shows in their swimming. They do whatever they can um, to help the team in points, but they also help to cheer on their teammates. So I would say they're all around athletes, not only in the water, but also all out of the water too. Swimming has been a bonding experience for Brooke and Courtney, but that bond extends beyond the pool. She totally understands like what I'm going through. If I don't get a best time, she's like there for me. And if she doesn't get a best time, I'm there for her. And it's actually like a lot of fun and we drive to practice together every day. So we have a lot of car time to like talk and listen to music. Last fall, Brooke and Courtney helped lead the Falcons to a top 10 finish at the state meet. Courtney took third place in the 500 freestyle and both girls were on Armstrong's 400 yard freestyle and 200 yard freestyle relay teams that finished fifth and sixth respectively. This being Brooke's senior year, she's intent on getting back to state and doing even better. We placed eighth at state last year, so hopefully we can place higher up than that. I mean, we have really good, strong relays and a lot of good individual swimmers that hopefully can make state as well. I just want to have a great season, have her a great send off because she's been on the team for six years. So I just want her to have a great season, end it really well, and then move on to college swimming and hopefully have a great season there too. For Courtney, being a part of this Armstrong swim team is exciting. The Falcons are very young, which gives her great hope for the future. It's true after this year, Courtney won't have Brooke to hold on to anymore, but it's pretty obvious she's good on her own. Jason Melillo, 12 Sports. A couple pretty talented sisters there. Armstrong will host district rival Cooper in a dual meet Tuesday night. Always a big one in any sport. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming up next, we're going to talk football with the Osseo Orioles after their big win over Maple Grove. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sports Jam. A great win in week number two for the Osseo football team as they beat rival Maple Grove by six. And we're joined by a couple of the guys that helped to make it happen, uh, starting the offensive side here in Harrison Lucas, a tight end. And how special is it to come out? Big crowd, a lot of fans for both teams, and uh, playing such an exciting one for you. It was the best feeling ever. Um, 
I don't know, just coming from down 13, you know, not getting our heads down. It just it just showed a lot of heart with our team and everything. So, I don't know, it was just great. You know, it's a great feeling, you know. I don't know, it, it's not really words for it, you know. It just feels good, senior year, beating, beating the rivalry, so. A lot of big plays for both teams' defenses, but also some offensive plays. They had the long completion to you that Garrison got hit just as he threw it, got it up there to you. How, how much fun was that to be a part of that one? That was great, you know. I just Anything to help my team, you know. It doesn't matter if it's blocking, catching. I, I just want to win, you know. And this is my brothers out here, so it's just a family. I'll do anything for them, you know. It was great. Solid start to the season for you guys uh, with the first two wins and, and not really against easy teams necessarily either. So that uh, even make it better knowing that you've beaten a couple quality teams? Yes, sir. Um, uh, we, got, we, got, we got another big one. So, you know, we can't just dwell on these last two games. You know, we got to keep pushing for it. It's only two games into the season, you know. We're working for a postseason. So, I mean, it's a great feeling to start 2-0, but we got to keep going, though. Got to keep pushing at the same pace. All right, congratulations. Nice win. And against Maple Grove, good luck against Blaine. Thank you, sir. And uh, Tony Gamash had an interception return for a touchdown in this uh, Maple Grove game. A uh, lot of big plays. Defensively, you guys picked off some passes. How special was it for the secondary to come through like you guys did? Um, I think, honestly, it saved us the game partially because our defense, uh, offense had a little bit of a slow start. But uh, I'm really proud of our defense because a lot of the seniors stepped up with that leadership role. And... <laughs> I'm so glad we beat the Grove, honestly. How, when you're a player, what is it like to be playing Maple Grove? You know, we know what it's like as fans to watch it and everything, but as a player, what does this rivalry mean to you? These are all the kids we played elementary school football with, junior high football. Beating them is like being our best friends. All, we're all good friends, but this rivalry is so intense. When we beat them, it's almost like the state game. Like, to be honest, this is top two games I think of my life ever. And it wasn't easy. There were times when they had the momentum on you, like uh, Harrison was saying early, especially. What kind of led you guys back to, to getting that, that momentum back? Um, we had a few big plays that really uh, really helped us good, got our motivation going, and then uh, our pep talk in, at halftime really got us fired up, I got to say. That's, I think, when we really turned it on. You go from 2-0 and o to facing another really good team. You host Blaine. Uh, I know you'll study them a lot more about them in the week ahead, of course, here and everything, but uh, you've had good games with them in the past. What do you look forward to against Blaine? Um, their power run. Like, I think we'll be ready for it. We're going to be looking at that film. Um, it's going to be a good game again. All right. I Hopefully as good as this one here. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, best of luck the rest of the season here. Thank you very much. All right, Tony Gamash from the Osseo football team. 2-0 start. We've got a big one coming up Friday night against the Blaine Bengals. We'll be back to put the finishing touches on Sports Jam for you here in just a moment. Just a reminder. Kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. Our game of the week is a late conference showdown in volleyball as Hopkins hosts Wayzata. The match is Thursday night at the Lindbergh Center. You can watch it on Channel 12, Friday night at either 8.30 or 11 o'clock, or Saturday afternoon at 2. That'll do it for this first sports jam of the season. Thanks so much for watching. We look forward to a great fall season. See you next time here on Sports Jam. Mark Saturday, September 22nd on your calendar for the annual District 279 Reading is Fun Run at the Elm Creek Park Reserve. See how you can get involved at 12.tv. It will be a lunch hour full of music on Saturday, October 6th as Music in the Streets, a fundraiser for instruments for kids in District 281, takes place. Find out more at 12.tv.